3D printing is getting more effective at producing large parts, and it's also introducing new options for producing large parts at large quantities, particularly quantities not quite large enough to justify mold tooling. I talked about this with Chuck Kennedy of Farsoon. Chuck, you brought in a really big part here. What is this? So yeah, it's a selective laser sintering part uh, built in our new model HT1001P. And this is our uh, standard nylon uh, PA12 uh, material that uh, we make at our factory as well. So we manufacture the material as well as the machines. This is an HVAC component. Is yes, right? yes. It's a HVAC component for uh, one of our um, partners in uh, China, and but it can. Uh, it's a global company that uh, they just happen to be manufacturing the HVAC components there. And uh, it used to be that uh, this was a molding application, so they'd create multiple. Uh, uh, molds and inserts to be able to push this out. It was formerly injection molded in in all one piece like no, this. No, actually it's probably about a two or three piece mold. So they consolidated it through design. When you look at the complexity of this part, you can see that there there's a lot of hidden channels, undercuts, those type of things. So all those things require some level of tooling to, to be able to uh, create a mass production type of part. So they were able to simplify some of that design and then through additive, and they're able to do this in uh, one piece. And this piece, uh, about 10 hours. So it's manufactures in about 10 hours. Do you know why the manufacturer arrived at 3D printing as the alternate process for this part? Was there a particular challenge of this component when it was molded, or was it a particularly difficult part? So when you took at uh, just general additive or tooling, injection molding, uh, you got to amortize the cost of those tools over time. So if you're looking at uh, a tool that maybe costs $500,000 to do, you've got to amortize that over so many components and it ends up being into that, you know, close to a million component type of amortization. You know, they may not have a, a car that's in that life cycle that they're going to sell that many units. So that's how they kind of derive to that, the per piece aspect of the cost. You know, we've got a limited volume of these cars and we only need you know, 50,000 of these parts over the next five years or three years. You know, do we want to spend this amount on tooling or let's just uh, produce the part in additive, which also allows them to come back into uh, making slight design changes and they can make those changes on the fly and improve things as the life of the car is out there. Those who are familiar with additive are not surprised by the complexity of this part. We're very familiar with seeing complex parts made additively, but we're not necessarily familiar with uh, additive uh, being made for a production part or a, a part at this scale. So let's talk about the size first. Are there technology advances or improvements that have made it practical to do SLS for a part this big? Yeah, and, and it kind of starts with the scanners and the, and the lasers. So there's some uh, technical advantages with uh, scanning systems in selective laser sintering uh, because of the accuracy of the Galvo systems. So it allows you to, to meet accuracies that you normally would only get out of injection molding. So when you're talking about those levels, uh, and it's scalable. This is scalable to the point where we could add four lasers, eight lasers, eight scanners, to really scale this up for larger production as well. You mentioned a uh, tens of thousands of units, perhaps. What does the additive manufacturing system or platform look like that takes a part like this and repetitively produces it at production scale? Picture a conveyor belt system. Um, that uh, this system alone has a uh, preheat station, so you have your cartridge in there that's being preheated. Then you have your build station. After this finishes, it moves over to an automated cooling station, and then it allows the next chamber to come in into the build station already preheated, and then starts up your next build. So it, it truly gets to that point where you're doing chain production. What is your sense of what that will mean? This is, this is 3D printing as an alternative to injection molding. How far can 3D printing go as a production process for parts like this? Uh, 
the big gap there is the raw material costs. You know, additive materials are still at a point where the uh, per kilo price of uh, powders is significantly higher than pellets, for instance. So it's, uh, the initial phases are gonna really be designed around um, custom, you know, uh, limited quantities. Uh, picture some of the custom cars that are out there that they're only gonna do a thousand cars. Um, when you talk about things like um, uh, widgets or gears or, or those type of things, uh, that you can take something that requires three or four parts to be screwed together now through additive you can do it in one part and you can put a thousand of them onto a build tray there's your value in getting out of that injection mold inside but big parts like this it's going to be very much custom into low volume highly complex parts